Dr. Rossi, sneakers.com. So welcome to another episode of New Medication Monday. And if you haven't liked and subscribed to the channel, please do so now. And we'll get into our discussion on this medication and this new medication, possibly an old trick, and why I think it's important for you to know about and what I think the potential benefits or uses will be. So I'm going to start the story with 19. 2019, when we first got approval for a medication that did not treat depression by the traditional monoamine pathways. And what I mean by that is we're not talking about increasing or reuptake inhibition of serotonin or norepinephrine or dopamine. We're talking about a completely different mechanism that was going to, that not only had rapid antidepressant effects, but also had rapid effects in terms of treating suicidality or acutely suicidal patients. So if you haven't guessed by now, that medication is, of course, ketamine. And in this discussion, I'm going to talk a little bit more about hydroxy norketamine. And that's a metabolite of esketamine and arketamine. And I'll tell you why this is more interesting possibly than those medications and possibly more a better option in the future for patients who are already using either esketamine spravato intranasally or ketamine infusions, which is a racemic mixture of both. So we have our first non-monoamine drug. And that was created in 20, that was a FDA approved in 2019 for major depressive disorder. And it has recently received approval for acute suicidality, like I'd mentioned previously. So this is nice. And what are the benefits, right? You might be asking Dr. Rossi, why is this important? Who cares about ketamine? Why not just take a regular antidepressant? Well, one of the problems with our antidepressants is that they take a long time to work. Generally, when we see a patient, we have to tell them something like expect about a four to six week period for the medication to reach full effect. Also expect that if we have to make further adjustments, it's going to maybe take even longer than that for the person to experience true either relief of their symptoms to the point of remission and or just to get a response to the medication even. So it takes a long time. What ketamine does is it bridges that gap. It basically allows for a rapid antidepressant effects as well as, again, reduce suicidality in less than 24-hour period. So this is pretty revolutionary for our field, which notoriously would treat, you know, whatever you had with either with some type of long-term solution, either long-term psychotherapy or medications that take weeks to work. So this is a huge benefit, rapid onset of antidepressant effects, as well as it provides us an avenue for treating acutely suicidal patients in the emergency room. So if you have a patient who you know walks in, is acutely suicidal, is doing you know possibly doing dangerous things in the emergency department, trying to harm themselves, you could have esketamine available, and that would potentially treat some of that some of those symptoms right so this is opening up an additional it's treating an additional niche that we really didn't have anything in the past to help with often it would be benzodiazepines to relax the person or some combination of benzodiazepines and antipsychotics if necessary to um, calm the person down so this offers another alternative and actually is treating the primary problem that the person's coming in with right? They're coming in because they're suicidal. Now, a lot of the mechanistic discussion on ketamine was surrounding the NMDA receptors, specifically those blocking these NMDA glutamate receptors. And people were saying, well, that must be the mechanism of action. Actually, we really don't know why this medication helps with anti with depression and why it reduces suicidality entirely. That mechanism has not been fully figured out to this point. But we do know that NMDA receptors can't be the entire story. So when you really start to look at the mechanism of ketamine, you start to see that there's some benefits to increasing BDNF, brain-derived nootropic factor. So ketamine is doing that. And specifically, hydroxynorketamine is responsible for this increase in BDNF as well as increased activity in the mTOR pathway. Now, the mTOR pathway would need its own video just to discuss that whole 
that whole process and the pathway and what it does, um, but we can leave it as it has many, many effects on cellular function. And one of those effects on cellular function is protein synthesis and synaptogenesis in the prefrontal cortex. So when we're talking about depression and we're talking about we're talking about ketamine, we're talking about mTOR activity resulting in increased protein synthesis and synaptogenesis primarily in the prefrontal cortex. So this is different. Again, this is, a, this is different than what we've talked about for the mechanism of ket ketamine in the past. Uh, BDNF is not exclusive to ketamine, but we do know that it is firmly established as as a and as having antidepressant effects so increasing bdnf results in reduced depression and the mTOR pathway is very popular among functional medicine people and integrative medicine people who are doing um, anti-aging clinics. There's some studies and research regarding uh, calorie restriction or caloric restriction resulting in increased activity in the mTOR pathway, reducing, um, basically providing an anti-aging effect or reduced uh, cellular damage effect for people who are looking to live longer and live healthier. So again, lots of research in that area and something to, to definitely look at. But getting back to our point here, S-ketamine and R-ketamine are both metabolized to hydroxynorketamine. So if you're given a racemic mixture as an IV infusion, it's a 50-50 mix of S-ketamine, R-ketamine. They're metabolized to hydroxynorketamine. If you're given just S-ketamine as an intranasal spravato medication, you will also get hydroxynorketamine when it's metabolized. What's interesting about hydroxynorketamine is it doesn't bind to the NMDA receptor. So how could it be that the primary mechanism that we were thinking was helping with people's depression actually isn't even being you know, doesn't have any binding activity when the metabolite is formed. Well, there's other benefits to hydroxynorketamine. It actually binds to another glutamate receptor. It's just not the NMDA receptor. It's the AMPA receptor. And we know that stimulating AMPA receptors increases BDNF and mTOR activity. So now we've come full circle to see how that discussion at the beginning on BDNF uh, increase as well as mTOR activity increase could potentially lead to antidepressant effects. So hydroxynorketamine has this effect on AMPA glutamate receptors and that results in increased BDNF as well as increased mTOR activity. So why does that matter, right? You might be saying, hey, who cares? Uh, at the end of the day, we know that S-ketamine is metabolized to you know, hydroxynorketamine anyway. So why would we want to isolate hydroxynorketamine and give potentially give that as the medication to patients instead of S-ketamine? And a lot of that, like many things, has to do with not only the, uh, not only the benefits of the antidepressant effects, but also reduced side effects. And that's what we're going for here. So the animal models, which, you know, are not always 100% um, the same as human models, obviously, but most drug design starts with animal models as, as a way of testing the drug. So we have to know first that it's, it's pretty safe, and then not only that it's safe, that it's actually effective, right? And we look at animal models to start with. So when you look at the animal models and the research, what you find is there's a rapid antidepressant effect, but there's no dissociative side effects, and more importantly, there's no abuse potential. One of the things that I talked about at the beginning of this lecture was saying that, you know, you're putting yourself, when before ketamine had an FDA approval for depression, you were kind of putting yourself at risk as a, as a physician prescribing this medication because you're it's not FDA approved and it has abuse potential. So what we're finding now in the animal models, at least, and hopefully eventually in, in, you know, in humans as well, is that hydroxynorketamine does not have those nasty side effects of dissociative symptoms as well as the abuse potential. So that's where this medication could potentially, again, fill a niche. And this is not necessarily a completely new mechanism because we know that even when you give people S-ketamine or R-ketamine, it's being metabolized to hydroxynorketamine. We're just trying to figure out what is the safest and most effective version of this medication to give to our patients so they don't have the side effects and they don't have the risk for developing dependence or abusing this medication. With that said, 
That's about all I'm going to say on hydroxynorketamine. If you guys have questions or comments, please drop them in the comments section below. I'd be happy to answer them. And like I said, please like and subscribe to the channel. We'll be continuing to produce new videos on new medications 